Hello everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood taco. Um, we're going to take a look at Space Monkeys, this game I just released. Behind the scenes, what it looks like in Click Team Fusion. <clears throat> so, here is the start screen. This is the first thing that uh, pops up. And what we have here is a frame that is... Why did that minimize? Uh, it's 1280 by 720. And... What we have here is a splash screen on the main part, and then down below, I have the start screen. And what we do is, um, let me explain a little more about this. So I have something called an INI file uh, object that lets you save stuff in an INI. And if you don't know what an INI is, it is essentially just a text file that is used for data. And it's the good thing about INI is it's really easy to set up. It's really easy to load from and save to, and it's in plain text, so it makes sense. But that's also the bad thing about it is that if someone knows where it's at, they can just edit it. It's very obvious. You can encrypt them, um, not with this object. There's another one that lets you encrypt. So if you you know want to do a little more protection, you can encrypt it. Um, but I'm saving it in the app data folder, and so unless you're you're savvy, you're probably not gonna be able to find it. This is the Android object, which lets you do some Android controls. And uh, the rest of the stuff on the screen is just some active objects, which are buttons, which do different things. <clears throat> um, these are backdrops. And so what we do at the start of the frame, we are loading up all of these global values. Here, This game is controlled by global values. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I've ever explained a global value, so if you don't know what that is, a global value is a value that you can read to and write to in Fusion from any frame. So instead of a value that would be in an object, which would be relative to the frame you were in, the global values can be accessed and used in any frame. So it's good for stuff that you need uh, like to run your game that's not frame specific. And I got a ton of stuff. I got like total gems, total coins, max health, all your upgrades, uh, the power gems, costs of things, or not costs, sorry, that's uh, those are cosmetic items that lets you know, lets the game know whether or not you have a cosmetic item if you own it and if it's equipped. Uh, and then I got some other stuff for dealing with the story. And the final one is called Full Version, and that lets the game know whether or not you bought it. So in this frame, we start out and we load all of our INI information into our uh, global values. Uh, first thing you have to do is set the file, so the file is called Monkeys. And also we do something called sleep prevention for the Android so the game will not fall asleep. And the rest of the stuff is pretty much just clicking on buttons to send you to different frames. Um, there's also a little timer for the splash screen. The splash screen is the first thing to show up. Um, and the splash screen is an object actually, <coughs> which has a transparency value. And I'm essentially turning it to become invisible. When it is invisible, then it moves the screen down to here so that I mean I could have had two frames but I, I could have put it I just put it all in one because why not save space um, <clears throat> okay so then we have the station um, we got a bunch of bunch of stuff here in the station so if you've never made a, a full game this is kind of what they end up looking like you get a bunch of weird stuff that only makes sense to you on the outsides of the frame but it really isn't as bad as it looks so all these buttons here they show up at different times. They have different values that determine when or not they're when, or when they are not going to be visible. Uh, you know, because this is. Yeah, I'll move that. That's our captain. <clears throat> so yeah, um, one thing you do have to keep in mind though, whenever you have a lot of stuff like this, is setting up the Z hierarchy, which is going to be you know, what's on top of what. You can do that through an always event and then just say bring to front and then put it in the order that you want it. Uh, obviously the last thing that gets brought to front will be the top layer. There's also something in Fusion called layers. I don't like to use them too much unless I have to, um, but you can add multiple layers and put things on different layers. The problem I have with that is it can easily get out of hand. You can forget which layer you're on, you're dropping objects everywhere, and then all of a sudden you realize half the objects you want on layer one are on layer four, and it's just a big old fashioned pain in the butt to fix that. So we have a couple of items or objects here in this frame. We have something 
We got the uh, Android object, the INI object, so we could load the values. This is something called in-app. It's to do in-app purchases. Uh, and this is my chart boost object. This allows me to access ads through chart boost. And this is just something I made called a game object, which I say values I might need in the frame, such as the conversation, the state of the story, and um, the transparency value of the buttons. So just like the first frame, we, instead of hopping to a new, uh, into a new <clears throat> frame, what we do is we move the screen to show different things. Like this is how you get rid of ads. And these are objects I placed over. See, this is the yes and this is the no. Do you want to keep keep ads or get rid of them? And so I, all I did was I made some objects and I put those objects over those buttons. And if you click the objects, then it'll do something. This thing here is something that shows up that you click to get 50 additional gems if you have watched this ad here. Uh, here is what it looks like. I try to keep things as organized as possible, but sometimes it gets out of hand. Uh, all we have here is we set up the scene. It does a bunch of different stuff. Uh, set to toggle here. Plays a <clears throat> plays a, a song infinitely. It'll keep looping that. We're setting up. We're loading the story state um, and doing sleep prevention. These are setting transparencies, showing buttons, hiding buttons. This is different stuff that happens in the state of the story. This is actually horribly designed. I, I really just kind of glued this one together. This is duct tape together. This is terrible. So if, if I ever release this file for people to look at as an example, there are much, much better ways to deal with the story. Story progression is not something I've done often, so... Um, yeah. Here are the buttons. Clicking on different buttons does different things. It's jumping to frames. It's uh, setting the state of the story, which is a a global value, to story state, which is a local value. Uh, essentially, what that's doing is <coughs> saving the current state of the story to the global value, so that when you come back to the screen, it knows where you're at in the story. Uh, this is stuff to do with chart boost. Is all about reward videos. If you watch the reward video, you get a reward. You have to cache the reward video. If it doesn't cache, we have a counter running, and that counter will attempt to cache the video ten times. If you can't, if it doesn't succeed, and within ten times it shuts down. Otherwise, it would just loop forever. And if a, if an ad doesn't get fed to us, or you know something happens, maybe you you hit a spot with bad internet, the game will just stall, and you don't want that to happen. So we put in a counter to ensure that it would close out this. Uh, with events, turning off ads. This is my this is my stuff for billing for people to pay me a dollar to get rid of ads. And we're doing purchase verification, blah 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 blah. That stuff's kind of complicated, sort of. It's really not that bad if you spend in a couple hours reading a reading a fact, you should be able to figure it out. Here's the level, the level itself. This is what this thing looks like. Look at that mess. As our level. Uh, what we have here is, this is actually garbage. I can delete that. Not, that does not get used. That's something that's de depreciated. That's from before. Uh, that was the, whenever you play the game, you fly in on a ship and then you crash and it blows up. And originally I just had a picture where the it was a static shot of a broken up ship. But my friend told me that that looked like garbage. So I broke it into a bunch of pieces like this over here. And these pieces, um, they, they, they. Once they, once you hit the asteroid, they are spawned in a certain, certain, not certain, a certain position, and they get a random like X and Y speed as well as a rotation. So it looks, you know, organic. Here's the ship that before it's broken, it gets destroyed when it hits this asteroid, which is the starter asteroid. The actual asteroid that you dodge in the game is this one here. It's called Asteroid Two. Um, the way I did that, there's only one asteroid object, and what we do is we, every so often, spawn it off screen, and then as soon as it's spawned, it sets itself to a random Y position, so within the confines of the screen, which for us is 720, so it's a random position uh, on the screen, <clears throat> and then is when it first gets created, it, hits, it uh, gives itself a random animation. The speed is zero of the animation, so it will not move, so... It gives itself a, a random animation frame, so I just have different frames.
frames for different asteroids. Originally, the game also, the asteroids would spin randomly, which looks really good and adds more gameplay, but it, it, it didn't work very good on Android. Scaling is rough, and uh, so is, is rotations. They can, they can eat up processing, so I had to make them static, unfortunately. But uh, that's just the way things go. Uh, here is, same thing happens with the ore. The ore is also just different frames. Oh, I forgot to mention, it also sets a random value for the size. Have you ever seen anything that says never? That means I depreciated it. I'm currently turning it off. That's the rotation code. If, um, if I get a build where it will start working on Android, I will just flip this to always and it will activate and we will have a rotation. And so how I did the rotations, if anyone is curious, because I wanted to rotate it less than one, potentially, we have a couple values here. We have something called position, rotate, current angle, and health. Health is how much health the object has. Uh, if you hit, you can shoot the asteroid with a blaster and it does different damage based on how upgrade that blaster is. So you can destroy it that way, or it just takes one shot from a missile. Um, so you have current angle and all we, and rotate. So when it spawns in, we just set the rotate to, I don't remember, it was like 200 or something like that. Um, here, it's under main. Spawn objects, asteroids. Okay, so what we're saying is the internal flag of this object called game object on. Um, I set the state of whether or not it, everything is supposed to be moving or not. Essentially, it's t it tells the game you're moving, that, that the, you're still in play. Because um, in reality, what's happening in this game, I know I'm getting off on a tangent. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, it's only one screen. The player is not moving. The player... He just sits where he's at, which is right here. You can't see him because he's obstructed by this invisible object. Um, so he doesn't move. So what we do, we do instead is move everything else left at a certain speed. And that speed is slowly increasing as time goes on. Now, the player will move. The faster that speed is, the player does set his position left of his original position. That way, if you start going super fast, you will have more time to react. It keeps the player further back. Uh, anyway, what was I saying? Okay, spawning. Yeah, here we go. So what we're asking is, is the is the game moving? Are we are we rolling? Uh, if there are less than seven asteroids on the screen, because on Android I had it up to ten and it was chugging along, <clears throat> and then all we're doing is spawning it every one and a half seconds, or yeah, one and a half seconds. So what we all we're doing is we're creating it at a specific place off screen, pretty far off screen. We are setting the angle to a random angle of 359, uh, quality one, meaning good quality, so it won't look all goofy. We're setting the scale to a random range between 50 and 180, and <clears throat> if you remember scales, <clears throat> one is 100%, so essentially, I wanted it to be between 50% and 180%, so we take that value that gets randomly generated and we multiply it by 0 0.01, giving us a, a, a value of, I guess, 0.5 to 1.8 should be. We're setting the position to um, 2,000. Why did I do that? Okay, that, I, that's kind of weird. That this game is not the best designed. Uh, the position is actually the value that sets the position, current X position of the asteroid. And so what we did here <coughs> is I spawned at a spot, then I'm moving it. I'm moving it. I'm setting it uh, initially to 2,000 which is going to be off screen because our screen is only 1280. Uh, and then I'm mul dividing by 32, multiplying it by 32. That's a little trick that'll put your object on a grid. So it's just it's ensuring that these these objects are generated on a 32 by 32 grid. I know that they're much bigger than that and they're not even relative to a 32 and 32 grid. But what that will do is gives you gives you more potential for... There's less positions that can be on the screen. So it kind of ensures in practicality that when there is space it's it's enough space to squeeze through. <clears throat> Same thing happened on the Y position, which is set to a random position of 720. Uh, the rotate is random 1000. So it's gonna give us a value of zero to 999, where it's subtracting 500. So um, that'll give us a, a, roughly it's giving us a rotation between negative 500 and positive 500. And then we're, we're dividing that so that it's less, or multiplying that so that it's less than one uh, at the end. So it's going to be a very small amount, uh, and what's that? What's that? 
what that is going to do is allow us to add rotate to the the rotate value to the current angle of our uh, asteroid which again I said is something it's something that's not being done currently but uh, it, it would so it lets it rotate less than one I hope that made sense I'm sorry if it didn't uh, this is just kind of a you know behind the scenes look so <sighs> pay attention you might learn something uh, if you don't pay attention you might not all right force animation frame to random six that is giving us our asteroid art uh, because like I said they are just one frame of an animation and we're setting the health to random 10 plus 10 so that gives us a health of uh, 10 to random 10 no uh, 19 potential we can potentially get 19 because one of those values is zero so you can have up to upwards of 19 health <clears throat> you get at least 10 though because it's adding 10 to it so that's how the asteroid functions um, also if the asteroid is overlapping an asteroid and the x position is greater than 1600 meaning it's off screen reasonably off screen so that it, it won't happen on screen we are setting the scale of it to its current x scale and we're subtracting a value so what that means is while the asteroids are off screen if they are touching each other these naughty asteroids <laughs> they will shrink uh that way they don't overlap so much because overlapping asteroids are ugly okay Ooh, that's a lot a lot to talk about um here's maurice he just hangs out off the screen i don't think he gets created at start let me see nope so he's he's not actually there um we, we create him at a certain trigger point this is a button a test button i can remove that probably i use that whenever i need to when i had new stuff that was happening in the game i would put this on the screen and i'd run it on android and i'd set it up so that if i click that button it would spawn enemies off the screen or onto the screen that i wanted to test so that's that's not that does not need to be created okay and um this is our button for shooting this is our counter this is just a backdrop our health is actually a uh, counter counters can be set as bars so we set it up i set it up as a bar giving it initial value of one and a max value of 10. so that is how we did that um here's the sharks oh these things here they get placed at the at the beginning of the screen let's see when that happens start a frame okay so you start a frame we set the x position and the y position uh, this is these are the overlays that as you hang out on the sides of the screen they increase their I suppose they they decrease their transparency they start out fully transparent and the larger you're there the more visible they become at a certain point they trigger that sound that ring, 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 scary sound uh, and that sound also increases um, in volume these are our power gems they get spawned it's uh, like 100, 200, 300, and 400 meters. Um, and if you collect them, that's how you win the game. You get all four of these. This is just this is just a uh, explosion that's used all the time. Here is a chest. This chest gives you a random value of money if you collide with it. And uh, once you do get the chest, I restricted the actions for five minutes, meaning that you this chest will not. Wait, did I do that? Five seconds. No, 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 no. I'm stupid. Uh, that's just to prevent you from grabbing it twice in case something because it gives you a lot of money it gives you random 1000 coins random 100 ore um if it's transparency we said it starts to become once you flip the switch on when you grab it flips the switch on plays a ka -ching sound changes the animation to a different animation which is the open frame uh and then what we do is we start to make it semi-transparent once the transparency is complete and it's no longer visible we destroy the object so it's not hanging around uh, and this thing does rotate rotates the same way that the asteroids rotate except it uh, works it's actually doing it I don't have to say never I say always I really hope this video is recording I'm gonna be super annoyed if I have to do this twice all right so we got the, this the thrust FX when the state of the player is different than dead meaning he's not dead uh, repeat while the left mouse button is pressed. Um, 
which even on Android on uh, with Fusion, left mouse button is the same thing as touching the screen. So that's good, that's useful. Uh, inter internal flag zero is on that. Again, I said that's the one that says the game is working. Uh, every five milliseconds, what we're doing is creating a thrust object at a certain point on our character. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot, originally it changed the colors. Replace color, I can probably just get rid of that. If I get, yeah, that's not, that's nothing. Let's delete that. Cleaning up the code. Yeah, originally this game was just a retarded endless runner with blocks and everything had random colors. It was so trippy. I don't know how it became a game about monkeys, but you know, that's how things transpire. Uh, set scale to X scale, same thing. Uh, we're, we're affecting the scale. Uh, it starts with a random scale and we're also setting a random position away from it, away from the initial point after it spawns. That way it kind of just makes it look a little, it makes it look different. You know, you don't want out, if they're all spawning in the same spot, it would look too predictable. It would look less like like smoke or whatever, thrust. Um, okay, so we create that object. Let's see if we can find it. It's on the frame somewhere. Uh, nah, whatever, we'll do it this way. Um, one thing you probably want to do when your game gets really big is set up folders and put things in it. I didn't, the last few things I didn't put in there. I can do that right now. Put that in engine. And chart, wait, what did I just throw in there? Chart boost goes in the engine. Here's a pause button. It's a really nice looking pause button, but it doesn't work. Um, I thought I could just, on PC with Click Team, you can just pause games. There's something called pause, and then when you press a key, it unpauses. That doesn't work on Android. And so I would have to go back in and recode this, and it would be a pain in my posterior just to have a pause. Uh, so I decided against it. I'm not doing that. All right, uh, I was going to show you something. What was I showing you? Oh, yeah. The um, the smoke. That's I believe that's in doodads. Uh, FX thrust. Here it is. It's just a white ball. That's all this. And uh, it has a little bit of code on it. Oh, also we have qualifiers here. Everything in this game that moves has a background scenery qualifier and a zero qualifier. The background scenery qualifier, it, the game constantly tells everything to move left by the value equal to the game speed. <clears throat> so if it has the background qualifier, it will be moving left uh, as long as the game is currently moving, which is what the flag of a zero was. Uh, the zero is something that tells it any object with a zero qualifier, when it gets certain distance off screen, it is destroyed. So when we spawn this thing, we are just always gonna set this in my transparency to the transparency value, adding three to that transparency value, shrinking it, set scale to X scale minus 0.015. Uh, and then when the transparency hits a level that is, makes it invisible, roughly 140 to 160 ish, whatever, we destroy it. Cleaning up, cleaning up the screen. Um, I think I also limit how many are on the screen. If not, I might need to do that. It would make it run better. Uh, spawn objects, asterisk thrust, nope. Okay. Oh, here's another. Why is that thrust? Oh yeah, derp. That is thrust. Okay, so if the, if ever the number of the rockets is greater than zero, every three milliseconds we create behind that rocket uh, a red thrust, and we do the exact same thing as the other thrust. That way the rockets have. Here, I'll show you. The rockets have thrust. There's our thrust effect. See how it, it starts off with a different, with a variant size and position, and the rockets they got thrust too. That's that. Ooh, I didn't close it, did I? Nope, still running. Okay. <clears throat> uh, what else do I want to show you guys? Oh, fragments. Uh, whenever you blow up, whenever you blow up an asteroid, it starts a loop called fragments, and all we do there is. Um, we, well, what do we do? Hold on. Where is it? This is all, look how crazy this gets. You would not believe how much, like, how much stuff you have to write down. This is why you absolutely, because this is a simple game. This is a very simple game. It took me freaking six weeks. I thought I could get this done in a week. I totally, totally was wrong. Um, anyway, so you need to comment if you make games, because even a little game, an endless runner involving a monkey, it gets stupid. Like, look at this crap. Look at our initialization. 
I mean, you can't. You would if you didn't comment this. You would look at this and be like, "What the heck?" And if you took a break for a week, like you come back after the weekend, and you would just be done. You would never be able to get back to this project. So you absolutely, absolutely need to comment. Like here on Z Hierarchy, I don't comment because it's just one thing. It's the Z Hierarchy, which I talked about earlier. Uh, fire rockets, spawn objects, walkie-talkies, coins, blah, 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 power-ups, tasty... What is that? Tasty banana. Uh, animations and sounds. I See, my organization skills are bad. I actually have sound. There's no sound here. This is just animation. Uh, sound is somewhere else. Let's edit that. Just call it animation. Uh, all this does is change his animation of the main character depending on what's happening uh, if he's rising or falling if you notice in the game I'll show you again when he's, he just has a static animation when he's, when he's rising and then it slowly moves his legs outward whenever he's falling um, oh yeah I want to show you guys the stars take a look at the stars stars are actually really really easy um, originally, I had about 500 stars that would get spawned, all with different sizes, different transparencies, different colors, and they would move differently left. That proved to be very difficult, uh, hard on the processor for the Android, and so I settled with a kind of, um, um, you know, a, a uh, what is it, a static, <laughs> my brain's not working, uh, I settled on a static backdrop for the stars. And then I just spawned about 30 stars, so you can't see them as well, but it still adds a little bit of a little bit of just depth to it. And all those stars do is uh, they have a random size when they are made, and then based on the size, the, they move left at a different speed. Meaning, so if they're bigger, that would that would mean to the player to the player's mind that they're closer, and so they move faster. And if they're further away, then they're they're you know then they're gonna move slower from your perspective. And so all I did is all they're all the same object. They just they just hit a random frame, giving them a different star, and then they get a random size. And if the that speed that they move left is determined, it's it's a ratio of that size. I hope that makes sense. Uh, this is chart boost. This runs my ads. This is player movement. I had to put a lot of qualifiers on stuff, which is not very clean. Like I, I came back for moving the player up, which happens whenever you touch the screen. I added a like is if this object here, this object here is invisible, then it does it. Um, that's because I didn't want you being able to control the character whenever that was visible. Because if that's visible, you're dead. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> um, this is just a, pe a static piece of art. It's all that is. It's a. Uh, we, the buttons, while they look like they're on the object, they're actually, the real buttons themselves are these three invisible round little dealies. These are counters. Counter. Uh, this is a counter. These are counters. This is, a, this is an object. Counter, counter. Uh, yeah. I think that kind of covers most of it. Here's a bunch of backdrop objects that get spawned into the frame later. There's a, it's a planet with some whales floating on it. Uh, there's a planet with some moons. Here's a bunch of ships. And there's like the Borg, kind of. If you like Star Trek, there's the Borg. Uh, yeah. Okay. I hope this was interesting, guys. Um, I might. Is there anything else I can show you? Here's my enemies down here. Let's see. Um, Doomsday. Oh, here's the ending. I'm not going to show you the ending. Yet to play the game. Go buy. Go go download the game. Give me some ad revenue. <laughs> Here's the cosmetics. Oh. Cosmetic. You know, I've never made uh, cosmetics. I've actually never made stores before. It really wasn't so bad. I'm sure my method was kind of ugly. What I did is I had uh, at the start of the frame. If you own the items, which is a global value, which gets loaded at the very beginning. So if you own the item, then it goes to each item and sets its value of owned to one, meaning it's owned, and then that'll that'll let you not purchase it again. It'll change the the semi-transparency of it. If you own it, it's half transparent, and it'll also allow you to equip it. 
Uh, and this is this is how every this is equipping the items. This, I had to make a. Uh, I know this is not this is not good programming. I'm actually not a very good coder. Um, I've just been doing it a long time, and I've learned a lot of tricks. There is, I'm sure, there is a way to do this in a few a few events, not one for every single object. But it was only like 12 objects or 14 14 objects, so I didn't care that much. So I did it the long way. <clears throat> uh, and if it's equipped, what it's doing here is if you equip an item, it puts a check mark on it. And so that's setting the position of the check mark. Uh, this saves it when you leave the store. Doomsday, Alchemy. Alchemy was really easy. There's not hardly anything on there. There's just there's a back button and then converting the coins to the gems and gems to the coins. And also a little code that lets you, when you press the back button on the Android device, it also goes back. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's all I'm going to show you guys. I hope that was interesting. Maybe. Informative. If not, I'm sorry. I can't do everything. Leon can't do everything. Alright, so. If you guys have any comments or suggestions for another video, if it's something you'd like to learn, um, let me know in the comments and I will try to get to it. Uh, like I said, I'm sorry I've been gone for so long, but I have been really busy. So uh, <clears throat> please, if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe. And, you know, maybe be a pal and download my game on the Android store. I'll put a link in, in, uh, in, in the info section. So, uh, with that, thank you guys for watching. All Might is in Taco, out!